Hey YouTube, welcome back to the Backpack Hack channel and I got a tip for those of you who uh, use a compass on a regular basis. Now there's no reason not to have a good quality compass. This is my primary compass, it's Sunto or Suntu or however you pronounce it. Uh, I don't know the model number, I'm not saying this is the best one out there, but it's the one I use. I also have a very basic Silva as a backup. And there is no excuse for not having a good quality compass. If you're going to be using a compass, you just as well spend the money. Either you get a $100 one or a $20 one, doesn't matter as long as it's quality. But what happens if you're out there and you find yourself without a compass? Either you've lost yours, it's broken, or something happened to it that you can't trust it. I'm going to show you how to make your own compass in a pinch using nothing more than a sewing needle and a magnet. Now, there's a few things that you're going to have to do before you do this out in the field, and I'm going to suggest you do this at home first so you have a little bit of preparation. But I always carry a little button magnet with me uh, just because they're so small and light. Uh, this is a button magnet. I think I got these six for $1.39 at the hardware store. But you just can't magnetize a needle and use this because you don't know which way is north and south. Now, if you've got a magnet that's marked north and south, it's a lot easier to do. But you'll need to figure out which is the north and south side of your magnet before you go to magnetize your needle so you know it's pointing north and not south. So let's bring the camera in here to the tabletop and I'll show you how to do this. Now when it comes to making a compass out of a sewing needle using a magnet, you're going to have to know which side is the north and south of the magnet. And unfortunately this little button cell is not marked. Now if you've got a bar magnet or a horseshoe magnet that is physically marked with north and south, you don't need to do this step. But since I don't know which is north and which is south on this magnet, I'm going to move these out of the way. I'm going to have to find out. Now it's very important to understand that when you get a magnet near your compass that you want to be very, very careful because you could reverse the polarity or you could erase the polarity of your compass with a magnet if you get it too close and it's a strong enough magnet. But suffice it to say that this is north, obviously, shows you that on the compass, but this is actually the south pole of the magnetized needle because opposites attract, the north magnetic pole attracts the south pole of this magnet. So what we need to do is determine whether this is the north, which whether this is the north, and this is the north, so this would be the south, and this would be the south. So we need to determine that. And we can do this very, very simply by setting it up on edge like this and bringing it in close to the compass, and you can see it's starting to spin it around. So that tells me this is the north pole, or this is the south pole, I'm sorry, because this would be the north pole here. So what I want to do is I want to swing it around and you can see that it is now attracted and points towards the magnet. So this being the south pole, this would be the north and this would be the south. So when I stand this up, that is the orientation that I want to uh, magnetize my needle with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle. And I'm going to magnetize it simply by pushing it against the uh, magnet and pulling it as I do so. I am magnetizing the needle. Now, what I'm going to do before I go any further is I'm going to mark with just a little bit of fingernail polish. And I love fingernail polish because it's a very small... Now that didn't work out too well, but that's the south side. I'll know that when I uh, use it. But now I have my needle magnetized. But of course, just laying it down on a surface is not going to pour it north because it has too much friction to overcome. So you need to float it. And to do that, I'm just going to use a basic saucer. And I'm going to pour some water in it. And like I say, I know this is north because 
That is the way my compasses are going, and of course I live here, so I know which way is north. And now I'm going to float my magnet. I'm going to use a 35 millimeter film can lid, but you can use a piece of grass or a leaf if you're out in the field or just a piece of paper. And if you have a very still body of water and you're very, very careful, you can actually float the needle with surface tension alone. But I'm going to spin this so it is sideways. And if I can get the needle to stay in the center of this, well, I'm not having good luck. And of course, this would not be very fun out there in the field either, but I'm just going to hopefully get this drop down on here. And I'm going to stop it so you can see that this is actually turning on its own. And it will actually, there's enough magnetic force imparting on that needle that it will eventually port north. Now, of course, it goes past north because there is enough mass in this uh, cap to carry it past, but you'll see it eventually will center on true north. I'll move this over here just a little bit, and I'll spin it a little bit to show you that it's moving freely and it will just turn right back and go north. Now, like I say, you need a still body of water to float your needle in. Um, if you have an aluminum or a plastic piece of cookware, you can't use steel, obviously, or anything, or no, anything with uh, iron or steel in it because that will affect the magnet. If nothing else, uh, dig a hole and line it with a piece of plastic or something, some way to float that needle. If, if you don't have a cap like this, you can use a piece of grass or a leaf. But as you can see, it is pointing the same direction as my two compasses. And this is why it's important to know the north and the south side of your magnet when you do this. Otherwise, it would be pointing south. If you know that it's going to point south, there's no big deal as long as you know that. But this is how you simply make a very basic rudimentary compass in a pinch. So just keep this idea in the back of your mind. It may save your life someday. And there you go. That's how to make a compass in a pinch. And it's a great science experiment, especially to teach your kids about how compasses work. So this is Backpack Hat coming at you with this trail tip. Be safe out there, and I'll see you out there on the trail.